Welcome to chapter two of Benjamin West. Chapter two, a wish I make. The first finger of light found Benjamin's bed. He turned his face to the wall, enjoying that delicious moment, half awake, half asleep. He sank deep into his feather bed. He pretended it was a great white cloud floating in the sky. <clears throat> See what he was doing? He was using his imagination. And that's so important, especially when someone is reading a book to you. Suddenly he felt someone in bed beside him and he turned and he noticed it was Jacob. He was tired, thought Benjamin. I'm gonna lie very still. But the harder Benjamin tried to lie still, the more he squirmed. And at last, Jacob began to squirm too. Are you awake? Whispered Benjamin. Well, Jacob sat, sat up startled, his face twisted into a shy smile. Sure, he sighed as if he was sorry to hear about it. And then he snuggled down under the warm covers. <coughs> Benjamin, he whispered, I make dreams in my sleep. Well, Benjamin wriggled his toes in excitement. Perhaps if he listened to Jacob's dreams, then Jacob would listen to his. And by Philadelphia, Jacob began his voice low and full of wonder. And by Philadelphia, we see ships building. Soon am I a man. Soon big ships I make, just like in my dream. I believe you will do it, Benjamin remarked politely. Now it was his turn. He sat bolt upright in bed. He forgot that he had dozens of chores to do. Jacob, he blurted out, I, I dream too, even, even when I'm awake. Yeah, Jacob asked. I dream, said Benjamin very, very slowly. I, I dream how someday I will paint pictures. No, exclaimed Jacob, his voice rising. Yes, pictures, repeated Jacob as he turned the matter over in his mind. Like when a deer come out of, from the woods, like, like when it makes down rain and sunshine together. <coughs> yes, Jacob, that's it, that's it, Benjamin. Benjamin laughed, that's it. He could hardly make his voice sound like his own. At, at last, he, he said the words. He had said them uh, right out. By mine house, we had two pictures, Jacob said proudly. Uh, you did? Asked Benjamin, unbelieving. Yeah, sure. Jacob, I, I have never seen a picture. I have only heard my uncle uh, Phineas of uh, Philadelphia tell me about them. Did you never see a picture? No, never. Bond, why is that? Uh, there was a long minute of silence. Well, we are Quakers, said Benjamin soberly. Uh, uh, Quakers think pictures are, they're needless. We don't need pictures. And Jacob sobered too. He tried to find words to tell Benjamin how sorry he was, but no words came. Then uh, suddenly his eyes, they brightened up. I make you a present, he said, as if that would fix everything. <clears throat> Again, there was an uncomfortable silence. It, it is the kitten I give you, Jacob said at last. Thy little black kitten. Yeah, choked Jacob. It makes easier to know he is by you. Oh, Jacob, I will take good care of him. He shall be our house cat. Never will he have to live in the barns. It, it, it wonders me if the kitten forgets Grimalkin. Grimalkin, replied Benjamin. Uh, yeah, Grimalkin was his mother. Would thee like to have me name the kitten Grimalkin? And Jacob seemed to have trouble in answering, and, and then the bed began to shake. Now, Benjamin wished he could think of something comforting to say. He just looked at Jacob. But Jacob was not crying. He was shaking with laughter. <coughs> ah, Benjamin, he giggled. 
Gremalkin is a, a she cat's name, but the kitten, he don't mind. No, of course not. We'll call him Gremalkin for his mother. All of a sudden, the inn seemed to come alive. There was the sound of heavy boots in the hall. Horses snorted and whinnied in the courtyard. Voices called back and forth. And there was the deep, throaty voices of the Germans. They were the burring voices of the Scottish-Irish. But Papa's stately voice boomed above them all as he gave out duties. Samuel... This be the day to sow the marshland with grass seed. John, you will, br you will brand the new bullocks today. Thomas, you will yoke the hogs so they will not go astray. Joseph, you and Benjamin can pry up some stones to build a fence along the upland pasture. But Benjamin was not listening. He was sniffing the air as noisily as Papa's hound dogs. <laughs> the most tantalizing smells were seeping in under the door. Ham and scrapple and eggs frying and pippin apples and cinnamon buns baking and the steaming fragrance of herb tea. Woo! Jacob, shouted Benjamin, on with thy clothes. A bold boys, they leaped out of bed and then burst into laughter. Except for their hats and their shoes, they were completely dressed. As Benjamin put on his shoes, he also put on a sober manner. Begin the day in quiet. Wow, well, guys, that has to do with a lot of our of our, how we begin our day here at school with our um, our our uh, calming videos, our quiet videos. Right? That's important. Don't raise your voice, he repeated under his breath. Uh, this morning, Papa will not need to remind me. <clears throat> then he promptly forgot his words, and he and Jacob tumbled down the stairs and into the bustling activity of the kitchen. Mama was moving silently and swiftly from fire to table. Benjamin's four sisters seemed everywhere at once, filling the salt and the sugar boxes and putting chairs and benches in place, and even Jacob's mother was helping. Benjamin, said Sarah, his oldest sister, wash your face at once, then blow on the conch, on the conch shell. Breakfast is ready. Well, uh, maybe some of you don't know what a conch shell is. It's, it's that big seashell that we sometimes get when we go to the beach. It's really big, and, and sometimes <coughs> their color is pink. And you can take the conch shell and you can actually listen into it and you might be able to hear the ocean. Well, they used the conch shell to sort of sound the alarm that uh, breakfast was ready. Well, Benjamin was so used to Sarah's chatter that he hardly heard her. He and Jacob were over in the chimney corner on their hands and their knees and they were peering into the egg basket in awe. Elmira was still there and someone had brought in all of her own white kittens and the black kitten was there too. He was a smart one, snuggled in among all the white kittens just to get warm. Benjamin looked up and caught Mama's eye. She smiled first at Benjamin, then at Jacob, and the black kitten will be as strong as any, she said. Now off to the wash bench. Both boys splashed their faces with cold water. Then they took turns blowing on the conch shell until Mr. West and Benjamin's four brothers came in from the woods and the field. <coughs> from the woods and the fields, and the guests flocked in from wagon shed and courtyard. Now, guys, to keep your your mind at ease, I'm not coughing because I have anything wrong. I'm coughing because I have a tickle in my throat and I'm reading. Back to the story. Papa sat down at the head of the table, straight and proud. In true Quaker fashion, he kept his hat on. It looked as if it had grown there. He waited patiently while his five sons and his 20 guests sat down at the table. And then he nodded his head in pleasure. <clears throat> he liked to see every chair and stool and bench and chest occupied. His blue eyes wandered over the table and lingered a moment on the cinnamon buns. He smiled in approval. 
When at last a stillness came over the room, he closed his eyes and folded his hands. What do you think they were about to do? If you said pray, you are right. And for a long time, no sound escaped his parted lips. Benjamin could feel little shivers raising up and down his spine, and he hoped his father's voice would, would, would tremble and quake until the very roof timbers shook. Almighty God, the trembling began. At the unexpected quaking sound, Jacob jumped and almost fell off of his chair. Be not frightened, whispered Benjamin. That is why we are called Quakers. Be not frightened, whispered Benjamin. It is the duty of man, Papa was praying, to care for all living creatures, large and small. The lowest creature has a work to do. The wren protects the fruit of the orchard. The barn cat protects the grain. The house cat protects man's food. We thank thee, O Lord, for sparing the life of a plain black kitten. Benjamin opened one eye and looked around. His brothers John, Thomas, Samuel, and Joseph sat thoughtful and grave, their eyes straight ahead, yet seeing nothing, the heads of the guests were bowed low. Mama and the girl stood behind the table. They were waiting to pour the tea to refill the serving dishes. All the people in the room, only Benjamin let his eyes wander. He watched the wisps of steam rising from the serving bowls. He could almost taste the flavorsome scrapple on his tongue. And just when he thought he could not wait another moment, Papa began to look natural once more. He spoke to the traveler beside him in his, <coughs> in his regular voice. It was the signal to eat. Immediately, knives and spoons clattered against the wooden plates, and meanwhile, over in the rush basket, the kitten squirmed and slept and made small mewing sounds. All too soon, breakfast was over. Wisps cracked, axles creaked, ox carts began rumbling out of the inn-yard, and Benjamin and Jacob stood over the kittens in an awkward silence. It was Jacob who spoke first. Benjamin, he said. Yes. I, uh, I, I, I wish I make, uh, you could paint so fine a picture of Grimalkin that anyone could tell it's a cat you paint. And Benjamin glanced, glanced around quickly to see if anyone had heard. And then their eyes locked. I wish I make two, he whispered. One day in Philadelphia, I will find thee building a great sea ship. And I shall set my easel on the bank and I shall paint the whole harbor. Jacob, come already, we go, his mother called. Arm in arm, Jacob and Benjamin walked slowly out of the inn. Goodbye, Benjamin, said Jacob with a catch in his voice. I wish you could uh, go with, he looked back over his shoulder toward the inn. Goodbye, Gramalkin, he said, scarcely above a whisper. And then he let go of Benjamin's arm and took his place alongside his father. And today he would not climb aboard the wagon. Today he would uh, help lead the oxen. It was as if he had grown into a man overnight. Slowly the cart rattled out of the courtyard, past the signboard, swinging from the buttonwood tree, past the yapping dogs, and off into the wilderness. Benjamin watched until Jacob and finally the whole cart were swallowed up and lost among the black tree trunks. And then he kicked the upping block to keep from crying. This has been chapter two of Benjamin West and his cat, Gramalkin. I'll see you soon.